what are people looking for? What are people looking for is that they like it. Yep. They want to listen to something they like. <laughs> yeah. They like it. They don't stop asking questions. They just like it. Mm -hmm. If they don't like it, then what's the solution? What what can they do so that they like it better? <clears throat> there are a lot of levels to that answer there. Sure. The first one is, um, how are audio systems designed? What are the parameters that define accuracy? How do companies feel confident that their equipment performs well. Right, yeah, it's a good question. I think different companies would answer that differently. Everybody uses some standard tests, but a lot of the time it's what somebody likes. I like this, I like that, you know. Now, at Daniel Hertz, we do something differently. In addition to the measurements, we have what's called a live versus recorded test. That means we ask musicians to play, we record them and we play them back on the spot. And we compare the sound coming out of our speakers with the live event that just happened a few minutes ago. Yeah. With the, with the musician there. Yeah. And other people there. And we ask people, is it something different? Do you hear anything different? Would you change something? And pretty much everybody says, that's it. We don't change anything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's what we're really confident about tone. Because if there were a problem, somebody would say something. The musician would, we would, somebody would. Somebody would say, hey, you know, why is that tone not right? Mm -hmm. But if, if, if you get that right, then the next question is, okay, <clears throat> then what about the commercial recordings that I have? How come they don't sound like that? Right, yeah. Well, because they're not made like that. They're made <laughs> another way. Yeah. Okay. So what can you do about that? Now, some people think, oh, I need a new DAC. I need a new preamp. I need new cables. I need a new speaker. I need a new amplifier. I need an upgrade. Yeah. Wait a minute. If the system is fundamentally faithful, for example, like the Daniel Hurt system, you don't solve that by changing equipment right. because the problem isn't the equipment in our case. Yep. It's the recording, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You do about that. That's why I created Masterclass, which is our audio software for Mac. Okay. Class says there are two things that we need to be happy listening to music. The first one is, if it feels like digital, we really won't be that happy. Mm -hmm. Somehow, it'll be disappointing. Somehow, sooner or later. Right, yep. If we need to be able to play digital recordings that sound and feel like analog. And that's exactly what we've done with Masterclass. <clears throat> that's the first thing. If you don't have that, you're pissing in the wind. And how does it work? You're never going to be happy. Oh, you're going to have that PCM digital fatigue and get tired of it. And you, then you go out looking for some equipment to fix it, which it won't do. Mm -hmm. Because the problem is in the recording. And the second thing is, the most important parameter in music reproduction is frequency response. Of all the parameters, Frequency response is the most important. Okay. The human ear, the human ear can hear two tenths of a dB, half a dB, <clears throat> one dB. Now you might say, "Oh, but I'm listening to flat equipment." No. You know these errors creep in. Point one here, point two there, point three there. They add up. Mm -hmm. You do a real test over the whole system. It's not flat. Yep. But the most important problem is that recordings are made on monitor systems that are different one from the other by as much as plus or minus 12 dB. Between the monitor that, they, that they're listening to, the, the engineer, and what? Let's say one engineer uses a pair of Yamaha NS10s yep. 
with a really shrieky solid state amplifier. Yep, I got you. Okay, I see That's where you're going. Another engineer uses B and W speakers with a tube amp, and it goes on and on. Yep. I mean, the, if you measure, this is what you can measure. You can measure differences of up to plus or minus 12 dB. Yep. Difference in monitor systems. I got you. And we can hear two tenths or half a dB. But I mean, what that means is that if you were in the control room with the engineers, yes. Music, musicians and record producers, you might all agree, hey, this is great. We like this. Right. This is great. But then you take it home. Yeah. Man, this sucks. Why? Because it's tuned for an NS10. It's tuned for a completely yeah. different tone and balance. Yeah. And not just an NS10. Well, yeah, whatever. The amplifier. Yes. The converter. Sure. The cables. The, the, the room. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. But don't forget the room. The equipment <laughs> that they're using is fundamentally different in terms of tonal balance. Okay. It's you can document it. You can yeah. write it down. Sure. You can measure it. Yeah. So what people are often trying to do is they're trying to make the recordings they have sound good. Okay. Okay. By, yep. changing, by changing gear. Yep. I'm with you. Not happening. Mm-hmm. Not happening. Oh, sure. For this recording, oh, it sounds a little better. But for another one, no. So there's no one right. Sure. Because recordings are not made in the same room on the same system by the same person all the time. They're made in radically different circumstances on radically different equipment. Mm. And when you hear something you don't like, maybe the, maybe you need to take a look at the recording itself. Sure. Now, why did I make Masterclass? I don't care about selling software, but I want to guarantee that my customers will be happy. Mm -hmm. Now, knowing what I know about recordings, how can I guarantee my customers will be happy if... if, if if they listen to a wide variety of recordings, I know they won't. First, I know they won't be happy if they just listen to digital stuff. And second, they won't be happy because the recordings are all made on different tonal balance standards. Mm -hmm. So a tool that they can use to, to fix that easily, that's what Masterclass is. Masterclass says it'll sound like analog and will match the tonal balance of the recording to my system, to whatever system you have. That's a good beginning. And we're the only company in the world that's making that. And does it work? Yes. We started selling Masterclass in 2014. We haven't had a single return yet. No customer wants to return. So, so is there, let me ask about the Masterclass. Do you have certain um, uh, algorithms and so forth? That, or is it just like a digital audio workstation that has EQ on it? I mean, like I could put Pro Tools and play music in my room and, and, and EQ it as well, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. Are you familiar with the cello audio palette? Todd, are you kidding, man? It's my biggest lust in audio I've ever had. <laughs> okay. Well, that EQ was developed by Dick Berlin over 40 years of research and development. Mm -hmm. And that is the EQ we're using in Masterclass, which is not like anything in Pro Tools or anything else. Got you, okay. When you listen to recordings made in different studios by different engineers and different eras and genres with all kinds of different equipment, mm -hmm. of course, they were, they were made to sound good on a system that's totally different from yours. Yeah, that makes sense, totally. Well, Masterclass is a really good tool. Mm -hmm. and Sounds it, like it. it. And you only buy it once, and then you can use it to... Um, as a player or a file generator. If you use it as a player, you just play, play files through it. But what I do is I use it as a file generator, which means that when I like when I get something sounding the way I like it, one click and it puts all the files in a new folder and they're all master class processed. Oh, you wow. Know, you don't have to do it again. So you could have different folders for different rigs, basically. Well, yeah, if you wanted to. I mean, <laughs> I'm a CD hi fi guy. Of course I do. <laughs> let's say, let's say that you uh, have an album, uh, have the Janos Starker 
Bach solo cello suites. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many tracks there are, maybe 26 tracks. Mm -hmm. So, you correct, and it was made in 1957. The 1957 microphones and 1957 tape recorders and all the rest of it. And it's, and, those, and it's a collector's edition. It's sold for a lot of money. You can make a master class version that sounds a hell of a lot better than any any LP you can find. Mm -hmm. And with one click, it'll, it will process all 26 tracks, put them in a folder, and there you have a master class version that sounds like an analog master tape, but made with better equipment than they had at the time. Wow. That's pretty compelling. Well... We do it all the time, and I'm just saying, if you are talking about uh, parameters like tone mm -hmm. or imaging or any of those parameters, you know, people talk about. Yep. You need an education, mm -hmm. and if you want a really good education, I suggest getting a copy of a master class.